sending a message to the nation. Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. New York is broke. Those are Governor Andrew Cuomo's words, not mine. He says the state is facing a $61 billion budget gap if it doesn't get help from the federal government. And we still don't know if that money's coming. The House approved a bill last week with aid for New York, but the Senate has no plans to pass it. And if the state doesn't get that money, Cuomo says he's going to make major cuts to education, local governments, and hospitals. Here's what he said this week. In many ways, they are in control of the state budget this year because we passed the budget, we have a shortfall. If Washington does not make up that shortfall, there will be cuts. And all of this comes as the governor continues to take heat for the state's handling of nursing homes during the COVID-19 crisis, and the legislature plans a surprise return trip to Albany. With me this week is Keisha Kluke from Bloomberg Law to discuss the week's news and more. Keisha, thanks for being on New York Now this week. Thanks for having me. So let's start with the nursing homes news this week. Help me understand, Keisha, because you've been following this. Why are people um, having differences of opinion over the governor's handling of nursing homes during this pandemic? I know that about a quarter of the state's deaths happen in nursing homes, but where does the governor play into that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it goes back to um, the state was really trying to catch up on the on, as it, it kind of was making up rules as it went along, right? Something happened, they tried to respond to it. And so a lot of the calls are related to a March 25th letter that went out to nursing home providers that basically said you can't deny um, a patient entrance to your nursing home just because they're positive for COVID. Um, now that that advice later changed as um, that came at a time when we were trying to make sure that there was hospital capacity. So we didn't want um, people who didn't need to be in hospitals when maybe they had a bed uh, that was available at a nursing home to be in the hospital taking up room for other people as well. Um, the guidance has since changed and uh, the Cuomo administration has made it clear that if a nursing home doesn't have separate staff, uh, the ability to quarantine the person, if they're not capable of making them um, safely in there and not at risk to other residents, then they're not supposed to take those uh, patients. However, because that initial guidance was a little bit different um, and the number of deaths, there's about 6,000 uh, confirmed and uh, presumed deaths in nursing homes across the state. It just continues to decline and people are saying, why did we mess up in the beginning? And there's a lot of criticism around it. So the governor's had a tough couple of weeks, both with nursing homes and with the state's finances. And he said this week and last week that we are facing what could be a $61 billion budget deficit because of the coronavirus. Keisha, how did we get here? Why is that number, um, how did we get to that number and why is this disease having such an impact on our communities? Yes, so the 61 billion is actually over the course of three years. Um, right now, we're currently projecting a $13.3 billion deficit, and that's since our projections on the budget in January. Um, that's a 14% decrease in revenue, and it's caused by a few factors. One, um, just the virus itself. It's really expensive to put all these things in place um, and have workers and have equipment and so forth. Um, also, the economy is at a standstill, so that revenue is not coming in to the state. Um, and then lastly, we also have the tax revenue. Uh, the state had shifted its uh, tax filing deadline to July 15th. It was originally scheduled for April 15th, but uh, we're aligning ourselves with the federal due date. And um, so we've actually had less people filing. As of the April 15th due date, 7 million people had filed, and that's 3 million less than normal. So that's $3 million, 3 million people's worth of tax revenues that the state's also not getting. Um, so we're in a sort of a, a host of issues that are all coming together to make this a, a major financial problem for the state for not only this year, but years to come. So what's going on on the federal level? I know that the governor is asking the, the Congress for this money. The House, as we mentioned, uh, did pass a bill. The Senate may not take it up, may or may not. What's happening there, I guess, is it realistic for the governor to expect that we will get this, uh, what is being called a blue state bailout by some, but is really just aid to the state? 
Mm -hmm. Well, the um, we have seen some relief from the federal government in their previous uh, stimulus packages, but it wasn't. It was more targeted toward fighting the virus and towards health care um, associated with the virus. And um, both Governor Cuomo, along with the National Association of Governors, have been calling for more aid, specifically targeted towards uh, local governments, counties, and state level. So that and and a little bit less strings attached to it. So it can't be maybe it can be used for a host of issues instead of for just one specific purpose. And um, the federal government has yet to provide that in any of their stimulus bills. Uh, the governor did talk to President Trump in past weeks, and the president had said that he's inter he's hearing the plea from the states. Um, he'll do his best to get it in the package, but of course it has to be um, an agreement on all sides on this. And uh, like you said, the House has proposed it. The Senate is not necessarily, we're hearing there might be some aid, but maybe not to the extent that the House is giving. So in the interim, uh, New York State is really facing uh, this waiting game on, on aid. Uh, so we can't put a plan in place to, uh, to adjust our spending revenue and let, and until we know the revenue that we have. All right, well, we will keep an eye on all of that. A lot of moving parts to watch. Keisha Kluke from Bloomberg Law, thanks so much for joining us here at the top of the show this week. Thanks for having me and stay safe.